Here in Wales, we are very lucky. We have some of the most beautiful landscapes in the British Isles, but this beautiful land of ours is coming under increasing pressure from our way of life, in particular, from the waste we throw away. This is how we currently deal with the problem of our waste, by burying it in holes in the ground known as landfill. And currently, for the Welsh taxpayer, it costs anything up to £100 for every tonne that we bury this way. And like everything else, the cost of this will only go up. Much of this waste should have been recycled already, and we can all do our bit to lessen landfill by minimising our waste in the first place, and then by recycling as much and as often as possible. However, some materials simply cannot be recycled, so we also have to decide how best to make the most out of these non-recyclable wastes. These landfill sites are not pretty. They waste natural resources and they harm our environment. So the problem is an urgent one, with landfill space running out in Wales. At our current rate of use, we've got something like seven years of landfill capacity left. To put it into perspective, every year we bury 2.5 million tonnes of waste into the ground, the equivalent of six rugby pitches stacked to the depth of the Millennium Stadium. There's a lot of raw materials and natural resources being wasted here, and our focus is on the stuff that can't be recycled, because nowadays, due to new technologies, there are far better ways of dealing with non-recyclable waste that can help us tackle climate change and benefit our society. This is the equivalent of sweeping the problem underneath the carpet. We have to develop new solutions and find an alternative to landfill. In this short film, we're going to look at energy from waste and how it allows us to use the waste we can't recycle and turn it into energy and heat that can be used in homes and businesses. We will also look at how this technology is already working in other parts of the British Isles. We will talk to those involved in operating the site about how it came into being and how it is run. We'll hear about residents' views and the benefits of creating energy from waste. This is an energy from waste site, similar to the ones being proposed in Wales, and is one of over 20 currently working in the UK, and one of over 600 worldwide. They make a real difference to the amount of waste that is sent to landfill, and they offer real benefits to their local communities. An average energy from waste facility will take up an area of between 6 and 17 acres, and unlike landfill sites, they won't need to grow so saving acres of land from being turned over to landfill every year. These facilities are not a replacement for recycling. We all still have to do our bit. In Wales, we aim to recycle at least 70% of our waste by 2025. Many European nations show that such high levels of recycling sit very comfortably alongside energy from waste technology. Almost without exception, the greenest EU countries with the highest rates of recycling are also the ones with the highest levels of energy from waste facilities. The problem lies with the waste we can't recycle that gets sent to landfill. Indeed, the Welsh Waste Strategy says that energy recovery plants like this one should be restricted to a size that matches the amount of waste we can't recycle. One thing to realise about this process is that, although the burning of waste is at its core, this technology has greatly advanced from the old incinerators of the 1970s, and they are now far more environmentally friendly. Emissions from a modern energy from waste facility are low, and the whole industry is constantly monitored to ensure the highest standards of environmental quality, air quality and safety standards. Indeed, plants can't get a licence to operate from the Environment Agency Wales, unless they can prove they pose no threat to the environment or to human health. So how does an energy from waste facility work? How do people feel about having such a facility on their doorstep? And what are the benefits, both to the country as a whole and to the host community? Waste arrives at the plant and can be sorted to remove some of the recycling that has been missed. The rest of the waste is fed into an incinerator which burns at a temperature of 850 degrees centigrade. This produces heat that is used to generate steam. This in turn drives turbines that generate electricity which is fed into the national grid. This process also produces heat which can be piped to nearby buildings and communities. All emissions are scrubbed by filters and all harmful gases are removed to make sure any emissions meet very strict environmental standards. The whole facility is constantly monitored to ensure it meets the very strict demands of its environmental permit. 
The ash that collects at the base of the incinerator is again sorted through to make sure any metals were missed in the initial sorting process are recovered. Around 20% of the waste brought into the plant will end up as ash, and this can be used in construction projects such as new roads. Only around 2% of the ash will be sent on to landfill. This is the ash captured in the air cleanup system. So that's how these facilities work. But what are the effects on the local communities? I think it's very important for local residents to have a say to find out what's happening with the um, uh, energy recovery facility. We used to meet about every three months, but as time has gone past, uh, we only meet maybe once or twice a year because the concerns uh, that, were that were originally here have forgotten them and they realise now that they are more at danger by living on a busy road with all the emissions from the, all the vehicles that go by. It allows the council to provide a lower cost service. So therefore, because we're not sending, sending our waste to landfill, we're sending it to the energy recovery facility, we're not basically paying the tax that comes on top of taking waste to landfill. We're processing approximately 225,000 tonnes of waste a year. That's 225,000 tonnes of waste diverted away from landfill and we're harnessing the energy from that waste. So we're saving on the, the gate fee to landfill, we're saving on the landfill tax from that and we're getting the revenue back from electricity sales and then we also sell heat to the local area as well. As a, as a council we get very few complaints about the facility because we're actually using the waste as a, as a source, as a fuel, where otherwise it would simply go down uh, into landfill. When we put our, our waste out each, each week, it's collected and then it's a matter of where that goes. And We just see the, the lorries disappearing down the streets. We all produce waste that we don't want, and rather than that being just buried in a hole in the ground, it's used for good purposes, for something we all need. That's heat and power. So energy from waste captures materials that might have been lost during recycling, reduces our reliance on landfill, provides us with heat and energy for use in local homes and businesses, and materials that can be used in the construction industry. While the whole process does produce some waste that can only be dealt with in landfill sites, this is only a fraction of the volume it might have been. Landfill is simply not an option for the future. It can cause problems of odour, dust and vermin. It can pollute our watercourses and it releases harmful greenhouse gases. It also means that we waste valuable natural resources. In the short term, we can't alter the fact that we all produce waste. What we can change is how much damage that waste does to the environment. Energy from waste as a treatment for the waste that is left over after we have reduced and recycled is an efficient solution to waste. It's also a great alternative to landfill. <laughs>